Hey guys, uh, welcome back to Cyber Security TV. Uh, this is episode three of the AWS Security. In this episode, we're gonna talk about the region, uh, availability zone, and the endpoints about the AWS uh, from a security perspective. Uh, so please uh, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Let's get into this. So we're gonna start with the region. And what is the AWS region? It's a geographical area for the AWS data center. So wherever AW has a like you know that data center uh, that particular uh, part is called the region now within the region that could be a multiple availability zones uh, we'll, we'll talk uh, a bit later about the availability zone but uh, let's focus on the region first so within the region there is uh, no duplication so for example aws has more than i guess 20 region across the world so if you deploy your application on uh, any of any particular region it does not replicate to other region by default that's something you would have to do manually uh, or like you know by making the configuration change within the aws because that way you are certain that your application is going to be available or product is going to be available if something happens to a particular region uh, now uh, when you choose the region you have to be little a uh, little bit like you know of uh, think about the compliance as well because uh, i'll take the example of the gdpr so uh, if you are doing mostly business in let's say us and now if you deploy your application into the europe region then you are uh, more uh, like you know you have to abide the gdpr compliance their privacy rules and like you know you have to go through the audit and everything so you if you are not dealing uh, in that area you might want to uh, select the region appropriately and then also you want to think about the latency like you know this is uh, by far like uh, most logical sense of choosing the region which is closer to your users so for example again if your users are in like you know us east coast then you don't want to select the region and Europe or Australia, which is very very far, where the data coming uh, back to the uh, East region takes longer latency time. So that's how you want to select the region. Now the next thing is uh, availability zones. So there are at least two zones in each region. So for example, uh, and and uh, so Northern Virginia, uh, it has like you know I guess more than two regions. So there are at least two, but there could be more than two. Uh, uh, zones in in particular region. Um, so and the use of that is these are fully fault isolation. And what does that mean is, uh, for example, if one of the uh, zone goes down for by certain reason, like you know, let's say uh, there is some natural disaster or something, and that that's why the zone completely goes down. Uh, the access to your application would still be accessible if. You have it deployed in or like you know replicated into multiple zones uh, and that's why like you know it's completely separate so uh, and like you know aws had made sure like amazon had made sure um, anything uh, that goes wrong with the first zone uh, would not affect the second zone and that's why again uh, this is not default configuration provided by the aws this is something that you would have to do it by yourself uh, to make it make sure like you know your application is available uh, into multiple uh, availability zones now let's take a look at the uh, diagram of the aws uh, region and availability zone so we can have a better idea how where the regions are located all right so uh, this is the map uh, like you know uh, for the aws regions and uh, the or orange ones are the one like you know which are coming soon and the blue ones are the actual regions so for example if you see here uh, uh, if we take the example of the east coast uh, you could see like you know uh, there are in the north america there are, there are a lot of like you know um, regions and within the regions uh, this number three denotes like you know how many old zones uh, does this region offers and and that's how it goes uh, same way like you know this uh, orange one are still coming soon so based on this you can decide like you know where you want uh, your application to be deployed uh, the same way if we go back to our aws console and if you want to see the multiple region uh, you can still uh, see here right here as well so based on whatever you select so for example let me select the uh, uh, let's say paris 
now we uh, once uh, once we go here and let's go to ec2 so i can show you all right there you go yeah so now we are into the uh, paris uh, region and then it has like you know a three availability zones which are 3a 3b and 3c so uh, likewise when you select any of the uh, particular region it should uh, show you what are these zones uh, you have possible like Northern Virginia has more than five I guess so that's how you want to uh, like you know when you when you want to deploy your application make sure you're using the availability zones appropriately so uh, the availability of the uh, application uh, remains intact and like you know uh, available to the user when something goes with one or other region all right let's go back to the uh, our presentation all right so last thing we're going to talk about is the endpoints uh, so endpoints are ways you can connect to the aws services so for example uh, just we just saw that like you know i was logged into the aws console and that's how I can access like, you know, EC2, uh, S3 and several other things like I am as we talked about in the previous episode. So that's the one way. The next one is the command line interface, which is CLI. Uh, this is where when you uh, create the user, you would also have a like, you know, way to allow a user to log in via command line interface, like, you know, providing the SSH keys and stuff like that. So that's also one of the options. And the third option is the APIs which is uh, uh, like, you know, uh, application programming interface. Uh, so we just develop developers like, you know, I use the AWS APIs to um, uh, like kind of integrate or, or consume some of the APIs uh, of the AWS to make the, like, you know, to reduce their work effort. Now there are uh, like, you know, few endpoints that that's are available within the region and within the availability zone. Uh, which way you can also access the AWS or a public network such as S3 and DynamoDB. So like, you know, both exposes the web URLs which you can directly copy and paste in the uh, in your browser and you can access those things as well. Uh, same way EC2. Uh, so like, you know, if you have application host under EC2, then uh, it will give you a, a, a host name or the URL which you can access. Uh, via public browser or like via browser and same goes with the elastic load balancer elb which are installed inside the ability zone and could be accessed uh you know over over the internet so uh, these are the main things uh, which i wanted to touch base and, and talk about because these are like you know uh, main keywords of the aws and, and you want to make sure you have the understanding right for region ability zone and the endpoints before uh, you make any configuration changes or anything. In the next episode, we'll uh, take a deeper dive on uh, some of the other AWS services. And then we'll also talk about like, you know, how to do the secure configuration as well. Uh, if you like the video, please hit the like button. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, thank you so much for your time and I'll see you guys next time.